thank the organizers for having invited me to give this plenary talk here. I was asked to give an instant photograph of the present development of the superconductors with uh, particular attention on the application. And this is what I have done, cited here, in view of the application of energy and accelerators. Well, the situation in the superconducting field today is clear. We still don't have the right superconductor, which is just useful in all the possibilities and all the applications. So we have to choose from the superconductors being adequate for individual solutions. If we treat the superconductor, we have several things which we have to optimize and which have to be there, without which we cannot use it. So the, all the factors we can mention are just limiting factors. That means PC must be there, the superconductor must have the right upper critical field and also the right irreversibility field, then energy losses must be uh, very small, thermal stability must be achieved, then we, they must be tolerant against tensile and compressive stresses, and finally they should also be tolerant against energy, high energy radiation in particular for for ether and for accelerators. The, there are other practical limitations, cost factors which are of course the cost, availability of the components, toxicity of the components, and finally the industrial have to produce this superconductor and a very limiting factor is the production rate per year and of course costs. Well, I'll talk, uh, I will first give an overview on WCTIN, then I go over to HDS superconductor which certainly are the most investigated uh, material classes today. Then I will come to NGB2 which has a smaller PC than the high PC, but, but it has an enormously smaller cost, it means like the 50 or so, which enhances its chances to be used for several uh, applications which we didn't envisage years ago. And finally, I have some words about the big tie wires with very recent results, which I classify as a surprise. Where are we today with the development of superconducting materials? Uh, I will just review recent results from of on the superconducting materials coming from various laboratories and industry. I have written to many people and all of them have answered to me and finally had such an amount of data and I had to, and I had to just sort in order to show you what I think is most important and most interesting, of course, those things I don't <coughs> mention are certainly important too, but I had to take a choice. I will give a special attention on the improvement which has been uh, achieved in the last years, and, and in very recent years also, and will uh, also <coughs> emphasize some unexpected results which are always the most important things, interesting things particularly. Well, let me start with the NAMC uh, The application is a uh, NMR magnet with a maximum of 23.5 Tesla. Uh, then laboratory magnet, also the same uh, value of field. Then ether is based on navicitin. Dipole for accelerators uh, have been done up to 16 Tesla produced by navicitin. And it's my special work at CERN, it is to estimate the irradiation load of the quadrupole for LHD upgrade which will be built in 2022. Uh, well, I would like to say something. If people think that development on HCS superconductor is too slow, I must correct them. I worked now since 40 years with diamond cities, and since 50 years it is known, and we still discover new things. That means to go deep into the knowledge of the material, this just takes time. In principle, we don't know so much as we would like. That is the reason, and that this is good for making further research. Well, the system now is within, as I said, it's for a uh, higher field. Uh, you see here from a Peter Lee's plot, here's the critical transdensity, 
and here you have the applied field. So the first 3.5 tesla is here, and it was able to make a magnet, even if you're quite close to HC2. This is absolutely fantastic. One remark, speaking about the NMR, the NMR lives, like an MRI, by the way, uh, on, uh, about the possibility <coughs> of, uh, of having a resistant loss uh, loops, that means persistent currents. And some problems are encountered if you have, for example, internal thin wire where there is an iobium sheet here, which has to, be, has to be removed if you want to avoid the contact uh, for, of a normal phase. It, it, uh, niobium gets normal at the presence of field. The bronze wires, with, where the external uh, sheet here, once you have etched away the bronze, it's just down to thin, it's just the ideal one. So I ignore it, 23.5 tesla has been done on bronze, on another one, but very probably, due to this property, could be the bronze. Well, now I speak about thin, in view of ether, or in view of uh, accelerators, <coughs> and uh, the worldwide uh, hunt for higher JC started, I think, like 10 years ago, and it was shown, it was asked to optimize JC at 4.2 and plus tesla, uh, which is just field in ether. For accelerator, for example, LHC upgrade should be 15 tesla, but what is good for 12 tesla will also be good for 15 <coughs> tesla, essentially. Well, um, the highest JC which have been reached so far <coughs> are with the internal thin RRP technique with the titanium al alloy is 3,000 to 3,300 amps per square millimeter by Oxford Instruments in the United States. And PIC technique has been developed by Brooker and uh, <coughs> has values which are slightly smaller. And you see that the heat treatment conditions are around 84 hours at 675 degrees. Well, the people at uh, CERN around Woodpool and Bruce Rossi and others with collaboration at the University of Geneva wanted to know more and have annealed that thing not only 84 hours but 320 hours at 625 degrees. The reason was that the transition didn't look neat. It looked like a good transition. And I will just show that point um, in the next graph. And I just introduced here this uh, low temperature specificity as a new way of analysis, which really sees everything and is in a, even in, in a multi-filamentary wire, and it's not depending on any shielding effect. You see just up to the last filament. And so here you have 675-84 hours. This is the one peak, which is shoulder here. And after 320 hours, you see two peaks corresponding to two ATC phases. So this was also a surprise. Uh, why do you have two ATC phases? Is that true? Is that not an error? <coughs> and so on. And uh, even on magnetization measurements, you see such a small bump. But based on that alone, nothing can be said. This is the real thing. This is the curve at zero tesla. If um, we apply, and in particular my co-worker, Carmine Senatore, applies the field on that and measure the specific heat again, you will see that you have um, the possibility to, to separate even, to, to, to see the development of these peaks as a function of field. Before to continue, we must assign, uh, we must make a model to assign a signification to each one of these peaks. This one, the higher one, with 18.2 degrees, uh, corresponds to the large grains, which are the external part of the, of the, super, uh, the internal part of the superconductor, and the fine grains here, uh, which are the main part. Uh, of course, what we want to have is a maximum of JC. You know, what of both phases is really developed? And for this, uh, Senatore has applied field, and you see these two peaks here. One and two at 0.5 tesla. At one tesla, you shift the higher peak <coughs> to lower values. Uh, the second one remains more or less, but it also shifts to the left. One tesla, and then three tesla, 
you see that the, they are just pushing against each other. And finally, at uh, 14 Tesla, uh, you see both peaks be just fall together around 10.5k. That means these two peaks not only have a uh, different VC, but they have also a different VC2 as follows from the variation in the field. Okay, uh, one can uh, ask what is the reason for two A15 phases. Here I have to go back to the metallurgy. In the superconductor, during the formation, you have uh, the reaction between uh, niobium, uh, tin, and titanium, and I don't think it's tantalum, in this case it's tantalum, you have ternary system. But in particular, you have ternary phase fields, which are A15 phase together with niobium 6, tin 5, and pure niobium. Or you have other possibilities of uh, ternary phase diagram. And in each one of these phase diagrams, the tie line which uh, define the formation of the A15 phase are different. That means during the formation, you change the composition inside of the filament because of the reaction, which lets uh, yeah, gradually changing overall composition. And you change from one ternary phase, uh, phase field to another ternary phase field. And this gives you two different A15 phases, uh, which can be very well explained by methodological argumentation. Well, before to continue, I just would like to recall what is usually neglected by most. Um, if you react niobium and tin at 675 degrees, you don't get an A15 phase usually. You get it only if you have a little amount of copper. That means in all superconductors, based on niobium and tin, you have a certain amount of 2 to 3 percent <coughs> copper inside. Where is the copper? It was known since 20 years uh, after Matsu and Aga from uh, Brookhaven National Lab has shown that you have really copper at the grain uh, boundary. Now, there have a few years ago, very recently, uh, my colleague Marco Cantoni at EPFL has used this fantastic apparatus of high resolution PEM combined with uh, electron loss spectroscopy, and he was able to make a scan on. Uh, on uh, the different <coughs> elements. Here the white point corresponds to copper. This is a projection, if you want, in PM microscope of a uh, 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 piece which is 20 nanometer uh, thick. The 20 nanometers, we are sure you get only one grain boundary, but you see a projection that means each point of copper corresponds to several points in a row. What this shows very clearly is that the copper is not continuous at the grain boundary. This is not possible because you can calculate the thickness of this copper will be smaller than one. <coughs> that means it's discontinuous. In other words, it doesn't disturb for the conduction of the physical current density. It also does not uh, add to the conduction of uh, critical currents as has been shown by comparing with an iron thin wires reacted at 900 degrees without copper. So what is important here is the copper is present, it is discontinuous, and it's essentially not influencing the AC. What is influencing the AC is the breakage of periodicity at the grain boundary uh, of the AC. Okay. Like in all other phases, the conditions of breakage, breakage of the periodicity at the grain boundary is that thing which gives you the imperfections uh, and the uh, uh, imperfection at the grain boundary, which finally will be the source of uh, pinning centers and which, which will influence the AC. Uh, just for curiosity, the coherent length of an uh, pin is here. Would the copper will be continuous here <coughs> and have no critical current density? Just want to say that. Uh, well, if we look for amphetamin wires and accelerators, we have to look how they behave uh, as a function of the applied high energy uh, irradiation. And uh, so we have done that because all data which were known were before 1990 and were on, uh, on wires <coughs> prepared by the bronze route. Today, we have wires made by internal team, RLP, or by TIT, which show much higher critical current densities 
And so it was important to know, is that really the same thing or not? We knew that it's essentially the decrease of the atomic order parameter, which is decreasing the irradiation. But, well, as a usual measure person then talk. It is what we have done. Uh, we have uh, sent wires with the highest safety possible, which is available today to our colleague Harold Weber in uh, Vienna, who has an atomic reactor, and he has irradiated it. <coughs> These are the old values of Harold Weber for ternary-rich alloy nabium-15 and for binary-rich nabium-15. Here it follows that the maximum of the HC of S is the zero, the zero over the fluent is higher for the binary, which is, of course, more ordered than the one because all the sites are occupied either by niobium or by tin. This is a new ongoing measurement. We are not finished. Actually, we are here. The point is not there. We are still measuring in Vienna. And so we are hoping to get this maximum, but it doesn't come. That means it doesn't fit with uh, the old graph. And then we thought about an error. So they have recalibrated the whole reactor, and <coughs> it is correct. The values are correct. And so we had to explain that. And then I recall that we made a measurement uh, many years ago, it was uh, 87, uh, together with uh, McGuinan. And, and uh, we saw that for a partly reacted and a fully reacted damage to thin wire, which have a different composition, that means the lattice parameter is slightly slower than that one. This is typically the lattice parameter closest to the geometry. And this would correspond to something like 23% tin. You see here that for 23% tin, the maximum is at 4 times 10 to 17 uh, newton per square centimeter, while here it is for the higher uh, circumference, 6 times 10 to 17. We learned from this graph very probably the more ordered your material is, the, the more pre uh, fluent do you need in order to reach this maximum of JT. By the way, the maximum of JT is uh, the result of a contradiction between a lowering of PC and an enhancement of the electrical resistivity, so it must give a maximum somewhere. And, uh, well, we wanted to see, is that really true? Again, we used uh, a friend coming at the Natorium measured specific heat, and we just characterized the dynamic in a new in a new way. That means by measuring the TC distribution, uh, determined from the jump of specific heat, and then uh, with uh, some calculation taking into account the entropy and so on, with the deconvolution, which gives you, without any doubt, the TC distribution. And then you see that the old bronze wires were more than one degree below that one of RRP of PAT, which was uh, very similar. That means uh, this shows us if you want to, to look about the properties of, of a material, it is not the TC onset which we should consider, but the distribution. By the way, this is also true if you look for pinning theories. Uh, it's nice to make a pinning theory with an onset value, but in principle, you should take a value which corresponds to the average or to the distribution of TC. This result will be shown, I will show those at the uh, applied superconductivity conference in September. And what follows is that the new wires with a high degree of ordering, with a higher DC, reach the maximum of DC at higher fluences. In other words, it's a positive news. They support more fluent before to get a decrease of DC. Now I come to the high DC uh, superconductors. The applications are here, cables, generators, motor transformers, and now really for future, one thinks about wind generators. There may be other applications I don't write here. But uh, I have thought a long time how to present that in that short time. And so I have chosen to present uh, very rapidly the commercial high TC superconductors as they are fabricated today by the six different uh, companies, maybe in the meantime there will be another one. Uh, this is Sumitomo in Japan, American Superconductor in the US, Superpower in the US, Fujifura in Japan, Tunam in South Korea, and Brooker in Germany. And here you see rapidly some details. 
all these companies work by some kind of a deposition, which is from case to case different, and with different starting materials and so on, and the methods are also quite different. <coughs> but one thing they have to announce you, that means how thick is the fabric, how, wa how wide is the fabrication width of the, uh, of the sheet they are producing by deposition. So here for Sumitomo is 30 millimeter, here 40, here 12, here 10, here 12 millimeter, and here 40 millimeter. That is, you have such ribbons which are then cut to by laser by to ribbons of 4 millimeter uh, width. And uh, what a value which was not able to, I was not able to re reach it uh, exactly, is the production rate, of course. I could not find it here. Here it could be estimated in 2009, 2010, it was more than 1,000 kilometers per year which was proposed. In the meantime, a big order was canceled, so I don't know what is the new value. <coughs> Here, maybe a realistic value of 150 kilometers per year, the goal. And uh, Fujikura, Tengting, and Tunam, and Rukas also. These numbers here are not absolute. They are maybe even wrong. They depend very much on the, on the momentaneous uh, ordering books. Uh, I will go now, before to go to the different uh, configurations, I just want to say, if one company makes another configuration than another one, is because of patent reason. Usually, because everything has been patented, so they have to do something new, which is one of the keys for the different to the very large number of different uh, <coughs> methods, and also because sometimes one solution appears to be more economical, or more effective, or more scientific. And you <coughs> see that different methods have been used, uh, coating with liquid, this is uh, AMSD, and <coughs> this is um, metal organic deposition. Here it is uh, metal or organic CVD, it's PLD, RCE, it says it can be in evaporation, and there are even other ones. Now, I don't want to go into the details of all the preparations. I show very rapidly all the six different configurations. <coughs> the one is from, I just start uh, with the American superconductors, not because it's better, but because it's the first one in my list. And you see here the superconductor is here, and it is only 1% of, of the whole thickness of the tape. Uh, which is of course only one limitation. In all other uh, tapes, we have only one to, two, one to one and a uh, half percent. The thickness of the superconductor here is point is 75 uh, nanometers. This is similar, although some local differences are val uh, vis uh, visible to the uh, superpower uh, configuration. Then you have <coughs> the Fujikura configuration, where you see from the principle, the same thing, but just the details are different. And here is Tsunam in South Korea, and here is Sumitomo, and here you have Brooker. Just before to pass over to the next thing, I just wanted to show results from Germany, where the, uh, the, the substrate is here on nickel, 7.5 or 9% of uh, some cents, near even 9.5. The important thing for the substrate due to that method here it, it has to be textured. So it has to be textured and the amount of tungsten is introduced in order to achieve a maximum uh, mechanical uh, stress. And of course, the combination of mechanical high mechanical stress and texturing is really high demanding. And uh, this company here, Unico, <coughs> which is on the company of Brooker, has done uh, marvelous work also with other people. Just before to continue, I just recall that uh, the wire from uh, Superpower was used by in the group of Professor Lavalletier in Florida to achieve uh, 35.5 Tesla as an insert magnet. This is promising. Now, uh, it is only part of the superconductor, which is ABC, but it shows that one can make enormous fields with these uh, superconductors. So we see even now, we can already see that the limitation in magnetic field, in, the, in the, the height of magnetic field, will not be given by the superconducting properties, but by the mechanical properties, due to the enormous Lorentz forces which act with high currents in high fields. 
Uh, now I want to just make a review of the different progresses achieved in HDS superconductors, and I just have made a list for myself what are the points where the different companies and also the laboratories have uh, achieved some enhancements. So I have enumer enumerated them. We have safe length, that means one kilometer and more. The layer thickness, if it's one micron or is it how much. <coughs> uh, additives, what, what are the effects of additives? What is the filling behavior, AC losses, mechanical properties, and finally, what is the, the response to uh, irradiation? So let's start with the safe length. I just show one graph here, which shows uh, from Fujikura. I could have shown another company, but I choose here Fujikura for 600 meters with uh, 698 amps with a plus minus here 5% or something like that, 10%, which shows you the fabrication during a very long length with almost homogeneous properties. It's not fully homogeneous, but it is humanly possible to make much better. Uh, superpower has published years ago 1,400 meter long uh, co conductor case, but their current was lower. Then the second one is the effect of the layer thickness. It's clear. The higher the layer thickness, the better is the, the IC or the IC in particular, the current. Now, um, it, is, it was a long time impossible to make larger uh, layer thicknesses than a half micron because you start with orientation problems inside of the, of the layer, which limits you finally. So it was shown here is that IC, the current, is enhancing almost linearly with the thickness if the conditions of growth are optimized. And uh, the result of that for uh, American superconductors, between instead of 0.8 microns, they have now 1.2 microns, and they reached the first goal which the company wanted to reach. They wanted to reach 8,000 amps per centimeter for a width of 10 millimeter at the design point. Oh, at the design point of uh, 30k and 1 to 3 tesla. So if you see 1 tesla, it is just 1,000 here and here. Uh, for, the, for the lower, for the <coughs> field applied per, uh, per, uh, parallel to the c-axis, which is the lower value, and the higher value is anyway above. This is the value which limits everything, usually that one parallel to the c-axis, perpendicular to the AB plane. So this first goal was achieved, but of course, this is just an intermediate goal. One should go much further to really be able to make this motor. Uh, then uh, Fujikura has done even better. They have they claim they have been produced six micron, uh, and apparently the physical current gets the physical current gets up above thousand amps. This was also a long-standing goal of, of many <laughs> companies, and it seems to be that some of them seem to be quite close to it. Uh, then the effect of additives. The effect of additives is a different one than the additive in our system, where the only effect is to enhance to the electrical resistivity. Here's the effect of additives. If you want to enhance uh, JC or other properties, is the fact that the additives are uh, uh, must have a size which is similar or even smaller if possible than the coherent plane, and they will be present as as the precipitation inside of the filament. Here from superpower they have, I just go further, uh, I go just further with this. The additive of superpower is spiral zirconite. I showed in JC, it's enhanced, but much more important, uh, due to the presence of the additive, <coughs> one quantity, one decisive quantity is decreased, it is the anisotropy. As you know, the anisotropy of high PC superconductor is for the industrial application a very uh, large uh, obstacle. And one is very happy to see that, for example, here the lower, the lower value with the lower, the orientation parallel to the C-axis is enhanced. So the, the ratio between this value and this value is only a factor two or something like that, also here. That means instead of the factor instead of factor five or even, even more, you have only factor two. This makes uh, the construction of a coil uh, easier and also with better properties at the end. I just compare the effect of additives between uh, 
the American superconductors and, uh, and superpower. And you see here, uh, uh, AMSC has, although much better isotropy, but they see a bit lower. Well, here, they see the better they see still the high level, and the factor is about two. That means with such, with such a conductor, it's clear you can produce in all directions, and in the, in the bad direction in particular, the same uh, property with only 50% of the wire. So it is also an economical argument. Uh, I come to the thinning. I will not talk too much about thinning, but I just want to recall that there is one interesting fact in these high PC superconductors. And uh, I show here that compare, please, the values without additives and the values with the additives. Without the additives at low temperature, that's the case. You see how the, the additives have absolutely no effect. Compare now the 77 uh, uh, green dependent, this one, and here you see what happens. That means we have two different uh, uh, mechanisms of thinning at low temperature and at high temperature. I just wanted to mention this. What is valid at 77 does, need, does not need to be valid at lower temperature. I come to the reduction of AC losses, which is a particularly important industrial uh, goal, uh, in particular in the present <laughs> age of AC current. And uh, one idea which came, uh, which is an old idea, but it was applied recently by Goldacher and <laughs> company and, and friends in uh, Karlsruhe, SIT, over in New Zealand, is the herbal technique which you see here. You can combine this herbal technique with triation. So Fujikura has used triation and see that the, the IC losses can be decreased by a valid factor, valuable factor. But you can also combine the triation and uh, and verbally, and this is actually been done at uh, IIT by Goldacher, and I just did not see the last result, but of course, this certainly will reduce the AC losses. Well, one is quite much advanced in the, with this uh, rubber technique, because if you want to make a cable, either you have a cable where you wind the, the tape around a certain uh, center, or you use such, uh, such rubble uh, cable here. This is such a rubble cable. And what is more important for me is that you can even with such a cable is here, you can even make a Rutherford cable, which is, for example, used for accelerators and others. So there is no limitations now for the applications of the of high PC superconductor. The only point is, of course, it will not get cheaper if you have to uh, to have an expensive tape and making a uh, uh, rubble and then apply it to a cable. But it is feasible and in some cases it may be deceptive. Tensile stress, I just very rapidly show it. You have here uh, for one for one uh, tape superpower, the irreversibility value is 0.8%, that means it's really very high. It depends essentially on the substrate on which the, the base is uh, deposited. And for American superconductors, it was measured in my lab by Ulietti years ago, and you see that we have only 0.5%. It is not because the, the tape is not good, but because they use another substrate material. Anyway, 0.5% is quite high, and it's largely enough for most applications. <coughs> now, the seventh one is the neutral irrigation of uh, IPC material, and you saw here an analogous effect to <coughs> nylon fifteen, but of course, as the effectors in IPC material is much more complex, and you have at the low fields and at high fields, you have a different behavior. At low fields, you have a decrease, at high fields, you have an increase, and you have some kind of uh, crossover here. That means you have a change of plus thinning between low and high fields, so it gets complicated. But see here, at high fields, you have an enhancement of the AC, and this is what we wanted, because usually, if you want to use this material in accelerator, you want to use the system test. Well, we have gone through to the IPC with the coated conductor, which was quite difficult because there was an enormous amount of data. Let's now come to those ones who have a little bit more, less material uh, available for discussing. This is bismuth 3 which is not correct. 
to say it has a short place here because it is the most established, the most developed superconductor we know <coughs> in the ICT. It is uh, due to relentless efforts by Sumitomo during the last uh, 25 years. And uh, this is the cross section. You have silver around, which guarantees you an absolute stability from the thermal point of view. And here, a lot of filament. And it has been used for building uh, small high field magnets. Now, very recently, there is a sweet Tesla MRI magnet which has been done. It is quite a large magnet. MRI is for human beings. And then, magnets with a very high ramp rate, which is possible due to the fact that uh, silver. Uh, which has a low electrical resistivity. And finally, uh, it will be used in the Yokohama project, which is under the construction as a cable. There are other cables <coughs> worldwide, but I just don't want to make a tour of that. Uh, let me show the development briefly. The value of uh, uh, critical current density over a, uh, a width of 10 millimeters calculated in order to compare it with the uh, uh, Coated conductors is around 250 now, and every year they have several Tesla more, and uh, some claims they will reach maybe 300 and even more. And so we let them develop. It is a uh, it is a very refreshing development, mm -hmm. and in particular it is also pushed by the fact that you can underdog or overdog, and, and uh, in, in this case you can uh, raise the values of the AC at uh, at a certain field in the, the high field range. And here is the mechanical properties of this uh, conductor, which uh, with several tricks which I used, is getting higher and higher and higher. And really now today, it is, uh, one can say, it's really acceptable. This was 2223. Two, two, Let me come to 2212. This is a quite a wild uh, composite. Uh, this compound, not the composite, the compound. Now, uh, this was 2212, uh, looks simpler than this was 223, of course, it has one and less. But from the free of metallurgy, it is much more complicated. And in particular, uh, it shows properties which we still don't understand. <coughs> in particular, one can make a round wire, and this rich <coughs> filament here seems to be quite independent uh, with respect, respect to the field direction. But this is not what they wanted to show. This I wanted to show. That means this uh, was given by David Labrestier. And it shows you the filament of uh, Bismuth 2212. You will not believe that that filament can carry current. That means uh, this is Bismuth 2212. In the center, it, uh, it is uh, empty. And at the surface, you have some holes here, which come to the fact that you have bubbles. You have gas bubbles which explode, if you want, during the reaction. And the miracle is that <coughs> in spite of this puzzle, you, you can carry current through. That means the current path around the holes here, those good current paths, uh, carry the current. And uh, so the idea was, how can we close these ones? Uh, I don't have a photograph here, uh, how they look if they are closed. But in principle, it has not been possible to close them completely. <coughs> but uh, well, this is just a high resolution uh, PM uh, with the FID cut where you see how it looks like the inside. It doesn't look better than in the external part. You see these layers of the bismuth two, two, one, two phase here, and the critical current is passing from one to the other, from one to the other, like that. And surprisingly enough, the current goes through in contrast to, for example, two to three, where it is much more difficult. And now, in order to reduce the number of these holes, you have uh, uh, um, the application of pressure. And here you see, uh, with the application of pressure, with the density, which is reaching something like 90% before reaction, you get almost double, uh, you have almost double the critical density. And if you want to plot the event, the, the, the progress of the Prisma 2212 so far, you can see the 2212 uh, before high pressure uh, <coughs> treatment and after high pressure treatment with an enhancement of 
it is expected that it will increase and it will be more. We don't know if that value, for example, at 15 tesla, will reach the, the, the minimum value we want to have for an accelerator, which is here. That means it sounds that we are staying on this side of this maximum, of this minimum, but the development continues. Let me come to NGP2 rapidly. This is the problem when I have worked myself with uh, the group in Geneva, uh, who is now late by my successor, it is Carmen Senatore, who is here. And uh, uh, NGP2 can be used for, it has been used for level measurement of liquid uh, hydrogen containers. I just saw a paper now from uh, Russia where Kostyuk and co workers have built a hydrogen school currency of 3 kiloamps at 20k cooled by hydrogen. That means that is also possible today and would finally give one of its advantages to this material. Then the biggest one is the lead project at CERN, headed by Amalia Ballerino, uh, who is uh, in this group by also at CERN. And you have 13,000 amp current lead at 10k, which go from the surface to minus 100 meters where the magnets are. The idea is, if you have LHC upgrade, there will be a much higher radiation down, down there. So you have to take all the electronics at the surface in order that it will not be damaged. So you, you the only thing which, are, which is remaining at the 100 meters under the earth are the magnets. Everything else comes up. It means you have to have current lead of 13,000 m times two times 1,600. So this makes a total of more than 10,000 kilometers times two wires. This is a solid goal for a producer of NGP2. In this case, uh, I'm proud to say that uh, the company which is best placed for that is uh, uh, Columbus, and it is headed by our former PhD student, Danny Graf. Well, then is Ignitor in uh, Russia, which is under construction. It is a kind of a fusion facility where I don't have understood exactly what it is. I did not get the, the data, but it is under construction and it is based on copper and on NGP2. Then finally, wind generators. Of course, everybody thinks about wind, thinks about wind generators made of hydrogen superconductors, but one has to think about it. One has sure shown that uh, to be interesting, to make a superconducting wind generator, it should have above 10 megawatts. 10 megawatts make a, a, a diameter of the rotor of uh, something like 180 meters, and the weight of the normal, normal state generator would be something like 800 tons. If you make it superconducting, it will be 400 tons, but it's still 400 tons. And if you look how much is used by the superconductor, it will be, I don't know how much, maybe 100 tons. Nobody can produce that big amount of hydrogen. heat. So NGV2, that can be made by kilometers, no problem. And so it could be that even if you have to put more power in order to cool down to 20K instead of 77 or 65 or whatever, it could be economical finally because you can, in a reasonable time, produce all the superconductor you need. And about collagen film coil, well, this is just in the air. Some people have mentioned that. <coughs> but it could be that it could replace an iron titanium colloidal film coil of diameter of 20 meters and more around liter, uh, uh, which then could be driven at 20K instead of 4.2. Well, the production, uh, very rapidly I go to the produ production of NGB2. There are three methods, uh, ex situ, in situ, and INDs, internal magnetic uh, diffusion. Uh, this is uh, when you do, you take NGV2 powders, here NGV2 plus bar, and here NG rod and B powder. You put everything in a cylinder, and you have represented the third case, and then you have a mechanical deformation, a monocore wire, bundling, and then uh, you sheet it with a strong uh, matrix, <coughs> then you deform again, and you have a multi-filamentary wire, and you react. This is almost the same thing for all these uh, methods, which are differing essential, essentially from the beginning here. The cross-sections, I can also show them here. Uh, this is the Columbus cross-section with the copper at the center. They are very well stabilized, by the way. 
the x two. This is hypothetic USA. In situ, you have here uh, mono outside, and you have an niobium barrier between the superconductor here and the uh, and the niobium or the copper oil. The uh, 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 it is uh, <coughs> uh, it is uh, copper aluminum oxide compound. And here it is I and heat in the pan, where you see that instead of having filament, you have the filament, and the center you have a small hole, which apparently doesn't disturb very much. The critical current density is here highest of all of these methods because of the density which is close to 100 percent, quite close to the end. Uh, one point on which I put a lot of importance at the end of my talk is an isotopy. You have NAV which is a beautiful isotropic superconductor. At NAV which is isotropic. The new superconductors have been high PC, all high PC, visible 212, visible 223, uh, IPCO, and also NGD2, and also the nick type, which will come at the end, they are all anisotropic. These are all ordered phases, but they are anisotropic. And uh, the expression of anisotropy it's very well seen here in this picture. It is the critical current density on the of the superconducting part of MGB2 wire. And this is the applied field. So please look, uh, this is now seen just as a comparison. The, uh, these are thin films, where which look very similar to down thin, even better at higher fields. But the same film with the perpendicular field is here. This is really a representation of such an uh, anisotropic effect. Then you have uh, you have uh, tapes which were done by Hester and co-workers in Dresden. They are very well textured, and you see here the field parallel to the surface, and here the field perpendicular to the surface. So the anisotropy is smaller because it is less perfect than a film, of course. And then you have here our own measurements on the on the wires which were produced by Hypotec and Press and Geneva, as I will tell you just in a moment. And here, the anisotropy almost disappeared. And here, for the Japanese IND wire, it also disappeared. That means you can, from this graph, see where is the limit of JC, of NGD2. And you can estimate that these values here are very close to the limit. So all what you do in a wire com containing all possible uh, orientations will not, very probably, not resolve above this value. Anyway, it's quite important because we have printed the force at something like uh, 47, which can be used for many applications. I just have four slides on densification before I go to the big slides. And um, densification, I find it's important because it could be used not only for NGB2, but also for Bitmo2212, as we have seen, and also for nick I just show that. Um, <coughs> identification is successful on a multi-filamentary wire, which was the beginning here. And this is after pressing with 1.5 gigapascal. These are the, the filament, which is uh, very forgiving and doesn't break due to this uh, pressure. This is 4.2 at zero. Uh, the difference between without pressure and 1.5 gigapascal, you have an enhancement of a factor two of critical current density. At 20K, you have a factor of four enhancement of heat even more. That means one sees that the density enhancement brings something in all superconductors which are based on powder. And here is the machine we have developed in Geneva, which is now working for densification in very long uh, wires. It can do, do actually uh, 300 meters a day, but maybe one day it can be, can be Expanded one kilometer a day or something like that. Let me come now to the very last. I have just two graphs. It is a nick type. Uh, the one to two wires based on barium, uh, potassium, iron two, uh, arsenic two. I will not say very much about this phases, only that much. Uh, this is the grain uh, given to me by Eric Helstrom. Uh, Jeremy White did the work in the lab of David Laboratiers. It is very clean uh, grain boundaries, which are much, much cleaner than, for example, the NGD2, but they're comparable to the high PC. So why are the properties not exactly those of the high PC? And this is shown here. 
Um, evet, okay, you look. This was the, you look at the right, maybe, this is the last page. These are the values of the people in Florida State University. These are the values uh, from the Professor Ma at the, at the Beijing. Meanwhile, uh, this uh, group in China has almost the same values here. Uh, I don't want to compare the group to each other. They are almost at the same level. What is important and what is surprising is why do the hell have we tended the fourth amplitude of first centimeter on a powder methodological to make wire, uh, well knowing that with high PC we have only 1,000 amps of first centimeter if we do the same thing. And uh, time is over, so I don't want to say very much about what the solution is here, because it is well known that Nikai have a much smaller anisotropy than HDS superconductors. That means just to say that the low coherence length, which is the same in both, uh, is just limiting. Uh, in all cases, JC is just too simple. And having now something which is lower and as of we know that the, the, the bad direction is not affecting so much the property of the good one, and we have, uh, we have uh, some kind of compensation if you want. And so it is possible to produce round wires, these were round wires I have shown, with considerable JC, 10 to the fourth at 4.2, at 10 tesla, but also at 20 tesla, also at 30 tesla. That means it is worthwhile to continue to do this uh, development. I don't believe, I don't believe that this will be used uh, technically because of the arsenic industrial don't like that, but for the mechanism, understand, the understanding of the mechanism, these are really, it, uh, it was a piece of chance to have these new superconductors. So this unexpected behavior is encouraging for further results. I don't make a conclusion, I have <coughs> said enough. These are the people to whom I thank. Let me just mention, essentially, Cardinal Senatore at the University of Geneva, Special Chief, and Milo Kulic, again, uh, in our group, and all the other people who sent me material. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much for a very detailed speech. And uh, now we can have other questions. Any questions? So everybody understood. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, in these uh, composite uh, materials, uh, you normally use one with normal methods, not with superconduction, one with superconduction. Would it be conceivable to use a superconducting material uh, in combination with high PC superconducting material? Just because by, um, by proximity effect, you might actually induce improved properties or superconducting properties in, in, in the matrix this way. You would like to induce proximity effect just mixing high PC yeah. and low PC, yeah. for so example. Like the, 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 the idea, idea, idea uh, uh, it's not completely new. Somebody had it and Immediately we say no, and uh, after some time I thought, why I say no? Uh, I say no because if you want to have a proximity effect, you have to have both phases in the nano size distribution, and it will be very difficult to maintain the low PC in the nano size <coughs> distribution uh, at under the same conditions of the nano size distribution of the of the high PC. But the idea I, I would like to follow that. One more question. Can you comment on the price of those uh, wires? I hope there is no industrial here who would kill me after that. <laughs> uh, I would say, actually, the quantum conductor could be, could be a plus line of 50%, it's under 50 dollars, you know, per meter, or something like that. And uh, this will come to sweet. Maybe they have plus minus five, 50%. Uh, these are numbers which I cannot know exactly because they depend on the quantity you buy. If you buy 10,000 kilometers, I guess that you will have much lower price than if you buy only one meter. But this is difficult, I think. And if uh, you want to compare with MGB2, MGB2 is one to two dollars per <coughs> kilo per meter. So it's really big gap between with intent and the chances of this. 
conductor for some frequencies. In particular, since magnesium and boron are both uh, quite abundant on Earth, let me finish saying that Turkey is the biggest producer in the world of boron. So uh, I think people will hear that it's very exciting. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, now, uh, uh, no more questions. I am looking around. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Mujinga. Now I give this certificate and click it, Professor.